Today we're into ballasting, but with various gauges and various scales. Hi, welcome back to Chatham on a Railway. I'm Charlie. But what's the difference between ballasting various scales and various gauges? Now, if we're going to talk about scales and gauges, perhaps we ought to start in the real world, where the scale is one to one. Beautiful. And here's a couple of typical pieces of ballast. Their size, they're sort of like a child's fist size or a young adult size pieces of rock. And obviously we lay them down, put our track on top to give it a stable platform, which is free draining. And that's what sort of ballast is all about. Now, here in the UK, where the railways were first invented, we have a standard gauge of four for eight and a half between the rails. And that's, that gauge has been adopted almost worldwide. But of course, you also have narrow gauge and they're also broad gauge. So in the real world, there are various gauges, but mainly standard gauge. Right. So when you get into model railway, what does that mean? Well, the implications are that you'll need to buy a ballast to suit the scale and the gauge that you are building. Now, there's nothing like the real world for reference. Now here you can see a picture which sort of shows you the size of ballast chunks on a uh, piece of standard gauge track and the sleeper spacing that says sort of normal throughout the world so you can see the size of these chunks. Of course, the, the color of the stone might vary considerably from the quarry it might come to. And on your layout, you might have ballast of different colours because your upline might be nearer a grey granite type quarry, whilst your downline might be uh, nearer a, a stone which is a, a red in colour. And then you can get sort of a compromise which adds great interest to your model. Now, where am I going with all this? Well, here is a piece of 12 millimetre ply, and I've put a, a coat, a sheet of uh, cork on it and painted it brown and then I have put on um, 0.8 millimeter cork strips on both these lines and three millimeter uh, cork on this one. Right, so what have we got? Well this is double O or HO bullhead track. This is double O nine track and this is N gauge track. So they all appear to be different but they're not. Well how can that be? Well it's sort of more straightforward than you might think, because this is uh, HO00, not a problem there, and it's uh, 176 scale. This is 009, which is 00 scale, 176, but it's nine millimetres between the rails. And finally, you have at the bottom there, N gauge. Unsurprisingly, it's nine millimetres between the rails, but it's a different scale. Its scale in the UK is 1 to 148, rather than this one here, or these two here, which is 1 to 176. It's bonkers. Now, before I start laying ballast, what I thought I would do first is I will spray these three tracks with Rail Match Sleeper Grime. It stays getting the airbrush out. Um, so I'll take it outside and give them a spray. And why would I want to do that? Well, because the sleeper grime will then sort of give the, uh, the remove the plasticky feel from the sleepers and also um, give it a bit of colour to the sides of the rails to sort of you know, imply rust and that sort of thing. Um, and then I shall obviously wipe off the excess to keep the rail heads clear because we need good conductivity. And it'll also help to blend in, obviously, the, the cork bed. And should I get any chips or stuff, or whatever, that won't come glaring through. So I'll whip outside and give this a quick spray. Well, it's now the following morning and I woke in the night and thought to myself, I've missed something here because on these tracks, I didn't include bullhead. So I came down here first thing this morning, cut out a section of the uh, Code 75 track and inserted a piece of bullhead track. And here you can see the difference. The gauge is still 
HO, but the sleeper spacing is double O. <laughs> this is confusing, isn't it? But the facts are that we, we in the double O world have HO track. And here you can see an image from the um, EM Society of Two Peaks. And the image on the um, left hand side is on code 100 track and the image on the right hand side is on EM tra track. And that EM track is actually double O scale rather than the HO scale. So I hope that kind of makes sense. Now, whilst I'm on the subject of track and we talk about bullhead track and flat bottom rail, there's nothing like a visual aid. This is a piece of bullhead track and this is a flat bottom rail. And this you will see on both concrete and wooden sleeper track. And this you may rarely see on um, wooden sleeper track. People say it's not around anymore. Well, here's an image from Yeovil Penn Mill down in deepest, darkest Somerset. And the tracks nearest the camera are on wooden sleeper with flat bottomed rail. However, those other two tracks are still in bullhead. And this image was taken in 2023. So let's not imagine that this stuff has all gone to the scrappies. It clearly hasn't. Now I have surrounding me loads of different types of ballast from different manufacturers and of different scales, let's say. <laughs> there we go again. But let's be honest, the most popular stuff on the market is made by Woodland Scenics and most people lean towards the, the grey blend because it's not so plain. You know, it's easier to weather down perhaps and gives you a, a different look. And I have here um, medium grey blend and fine grey blend. So what I'm going to do on this Code 100 and the bullhead is pop down only with a spoon, not one of the fancy applicators. I'm going to put um, two lots down, one in each area and of this two lots down. And then we'll bring the camera in nice and close and see which of these two ballasts closest resembles the real thing. So this is the medium grey blend. Pop some of this into the sleepers here. I don't need too much for this little uh, experiment. And so I'm popping the fine into the Code 100 bullhead. And then the standard not code 100 bullhead, is it? Code 75 bullhead. So now it's results time. And on the code 100, in these first uh, three sections here, we have the Woodland, Woodland Scenics fine ballast. And I've popped a couple of chunks on top of this sleeper so you can see their size. Whereas here, this is the medium and again a couple of chunks on top of this sleeper. And as you can see, this is considerably bigger than this. This does appear to replicate more the photographs that we showed earlier. And moving over to the Code 75 bullhead, again these first three sections are with the Woodland Scenics Fine and these are with the Woodland Scenics Medium and again a few chunks on top of the sleeper tops so you can see the size. Um, when you look at it sort of like this it seems okay but it's only really when you consider what the alternatives are that this does look so much better. Of course we're talking about uh, double O scale so therefore the 009 track albeit being narrow gauge the exactly the same results apply. Well now it's time to move on to the scale of N. A, ba a band of uh, modelers who feel I've ignored them in the past rest assured today I'm not. Now we've looked at the Woodland Scenics um, medium uh, sorry, the fine ballast, and I think it's fair to say that it will be too coarse for N because we know where it is. It's, it's right down the, 
down the line of um, 00HO, it's great for that scale. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six options here. So what I'm going to do is just go through them and then I'll cut to where I've laid them out on the track and see what you think. So in no particular order, they are from Pico. We have PS305. It's a fine gray, fine grade weathered ballast. I'm using it because it says fine. We have then from Slater's Track Parts, Scale Granite Track Ballast Fine. If it's fine, we'll give it a go. And then from Gauge Master, we have Granite Ballast N. N's a bit of a giveaway there. And from World War Scenics, we have Extra Fine Dark Grey. Again, they use the F word. And from uh, Jarvis, Jarvis uh, Extra Fine Ballast Chippings. And finally, from the local pet shop, we have um, <laughs> Chinchilla Sand. Now, um, I've done a little bit of research. There are no, this isn't made of crushed chinchillas. It's just sand. Apparently, chinchillas can't go out in the rain or anything, so they wash themselves in sand. So um, if you use this stuff, please be aware there may be a chinchilla attack. There we go. Right, so I shall open up these six, put them on the track, and get back to you. Well, the results are in, and the results are somewhat surprising. Now, first up is the Pico Permanent Way Ballast, PS305, weathered ballast grey, fine grade. And to be perfectly honest, this isn't very fine at all. And comparing it to the Woodland Scenic stuff, it's somewhere between medium and fine, really. So, yes, it's suitable more for double O, but certainly, certainly nowhere near N. Second up, we have the Slater's Track Parts Scale Granite Track Ballast. And I must confess, this is so dusty, it's dreadful. But, I mean, it is quite fine, but the size isn't really that consistent. There are big chunks and there are small chunks, but the fine stuff, whether you want to sieve it, would work. But the dust is one thing to put me off. Next we have from Gauge Master the GM115 Granite Ballast in N. It seems okay, but <laughs> it's very shiny for some reason. It's almost like it's got sort of glass in it. It's just, it comes back at you, which strikes me as not um, such a good idea at all. And then we have from uh, World War Scenics, we have their extra fine dark grey stone ballast, um, and this is lovely. You can see, again see the uh, ballast on top of the uh, sleeper, and you can see that it actually um, it is marginally over scale, but then perhaps what do we expect? But that is a nice ballast. Next, we have the one from Jarvis. And this is Jarvis Country Scenics, the extra fine ballast chippings. And this is anything but fine. This really is quite a coarse ballast. And then finally, from your local pet store, we have chinchilla sand, which I cannot deny is absolutely marvellous. And at the price of this stuff, this, I mean, this, this, and the huge bag of this retails at something like just under five pounds. But you can see from the specs on top of the ballast, it is just fine, although it is slightly on the, the whiter side. So it, this to, I, in my mind, there are two choices. There's the World War Scenics Extra Fine Dark Grey Ballast or the uh, Chinchilla Sand. Marvellous. Very scientific. Now, it would be remiss of me to carry on without actually laying the ballast down on the track. So, as you can see, I have put in two strips of red insulating tape so that the ballast stays relatively close to the track. The track is mounted on the 0.8 millimetre foam uh, cork track bed, so it should give it a small shoulder with a bit of luck. What am I using? Well, I'm using the World War Celix um, ballast and also the chinchilla sand, so I'll do 50-50 mix. 
I've also got from Golden Valley Hobbies a, an N-gauge ballast dispenser. This one doesn't have a door, but it does have two sets of bristles, so we'll see how that pans out. And the other tools I've got is a paintbrush, a tiny brush and a spoon and, excuse the noise, a handheld vacuum cleaner. The, the, needless to say, there's, one, there's a link to this in the show more tab because it will hoover up the excess ballast and because it's clean, I can um, recycle it. So, better get on with it then. Now I've decanted some of the World War Scenics ballast into a, an old mustard pot, makes it a little bit more pourable. Um, and this one from Golden Valley's Hobbies has got a few cutouts in it, obviously to allow the track to come through. Um, but the motion is a bit erratic, but we'll see. I'm not going to try and do the far end piece, it's a little bit too uh, awkward there. So we'll just whap it in and then try to get halfway up the board and then stop and then move on to the chinchilla sand. Right, wish me luck, let's go. Right, well I've obviously put far too much in there. It's still pouring out. <laughs> but, that's not, not too bad, is it? I shall quick tidy up here and then we'll move on to the chinchilla sand. And that, to me, for a quick and dirty, looks pretty good. Right. Gosh, that's fine, isn't it? That really does come out at a rate of knots. Now let's be honest, for what is it, five, ten minutes work? That's not a bad result really. The chinchilla sand is far finer than the World War scenic stuff, but they're sort of, they're both good in their own way really. So I think what I need to do now is mix up some glue and make it a more permanent job. Now a normal ballast sort of routine, I have sprayed this with isopropyl alcohol to give it a, a good key for the glue. The isopropyl alcohol will naturally evaporate faster than the water and then ordinary white wood glue with a couple of um, drops of wash up liquid. Now I know that from the fact that N-gauge ballast being finer, this will not run through it as quick as I don't believe it'll run through it quite as quickly as with double O. So I've watered it down, perhaps not 50 50, perhaps 60 40. And hopefully, this will run through. <laughs> or not. Yes, it is. It's slowly going through. Yeah. 
very therapeutic this isn't it I'll see you in 10 minutes now whilst my little test piece is drying I thought I'd come back to talking about ballast in general terms for just a minute the way I see it ballasting is in sort of three sections if you like there's pre-ballasting ballasting and post-ballasting oh it's catching on this isn't it so pre-ballasting what's that so you've got it before you ballast your track your point work everything else all your feeds your power everything else must be in perfect working order there's no point in ballasting and then ripping it all up oh and of course you've got to be satisfied with your track pan before you start hoofing it all back up with a scraper I've, I've been there and I'm sure a lot of you folks have as well so that's your pre-ballasting so things like cable cable troughing um, signal bases relay box bases perhaps down pipes all these sort of stuff that go in and um, can't go in after the ballast if you see what I mean so then of course you've got the ballasting and you crack on with that and then once that's done you've got your post ballasting your installation of your signals your overhead power systems having put the bases on before you ballast um, and all the rest of you know the, the finery that can do afterwards never do those earlier because you'll end up ripping it all out again um, and earlier I mentioned something called a cess now that's pronounced c-e-s-s -S. and from this image you can see that it's sort of formed from a substructure of your basic railway and the cess tends to be a safe area for your person your permanent way staff to go whilst trains go trundling by and if it's in good condition then um, it's it's made of a finer gravel it was what it appears to be now there's a few images here from a good friend of mine graham um, which tend to show the cess or, or where it sort of was because as ballast is built up then the, the cess sort of gets lower and sort of disappears into the undergrowth um, but you can see the cess uh, in, in some ways in, in some of these images okay so what does that mean for Chadwick well having bought this chinchilla sand it strikes me as the ideal thing to use for my cess now I ballasted this area um, I don't know, probably a year ago now and I used Woodland Scenic's fine grey blend beautiful but I wanted a cess on the side alongside this cable trunking so I've just been putting some in and I'll just finish this little bit here so with this chinchilla sand I'm just using a small um, teaspoon and putting it in place along the side just like that and then running it along with my finger And then what I shall do is put some of the remnants of that PVA that I used half an hour ago on that little test piece. And hopefully you can see now a sort of a, a change of colour, a hint of the, how the cess would have been established when uh, this section was put together. And then of course it will become more obscure when uh, we do some weathering here and the greens and the weeds and the brambles are all modelled in and so once more it's the following day and time to rip off our red tape and uh, see if it's okay um, it's dried overnight it's all nice and hard um, both ballasts have got a little darker so let's get in close and, uh, and peel away. Well, there we have the finished test piece and hopefully you'd agree that both of those ballasts look quite good. You can always go around with a screwdriver and scrape some of the ballast off the sleeper tops but as you can see here at Yeovil Penmill station 
Um, it's, it's, it's incredible the state our real railways are in when we're trying to replicate them because we you know, remove every single piece of uh, ballast and somehow we think that looks better when the real world is clearly um, somewhat different, let's say. What do I think of these two ballasts? Where they, well, as far as end gauge is concerned, they clearly are the pick of the bunch. Um, the chinchilla sand is clearly cheaper, um, but uh, you know, it's each, each to our own choice, really. But I do like the chinchilla sand. It is very fine and it's cheap. And of course, we can weather it down sort of slightly, whereas actually the World War, the World War Scenics ballast is already quite dark. And please don't forget that those fine ballasts can be used to create your own cess should you want one. Um, the dispenser was from goldenvalleyshobbies.com. Nice little bit of kit. Like most things, just takes a little bit of a knack, really, but quite interesting. Um, I'd like to thank the patrons uh, in particular for this video because of all that ballast I had to buy in and without their support I couldn't do it. So if you'd like to become a patron, there's the button. There's the button to become a subscriber and the video here and here. But next week we're back on the layout. See you then. Bye-bye. Take care.